Now, in this lecture and the next few lectures, I'd like to spend some time talking about captive portals and how to bypass them. Captive portals are becoming very popular these days and they're, they're being used everywhere. You can see them in colleges, offices, companies, airports, hotels, and so on. Usually the way a captive portal works is that it's an open network so you can see it and you can connect to it without an encryption and once you connect you'll automatically see a login page that you have to log in so you can access the internet. So in hotels sometimes it asks you for the room number, sometimes you have to pay to get a certain password, sometimes you have to log in with Facebook and so on. So let me just show you an example of a captive portal real quick right here. I have one set up here in the office. So if I go here, I just called it airport hotspot just for an example, but it's actually not an airport network. So I'm going to connect to it right now. And you'll see automatically I see a login page that will ask me to enter a password to access the internet. Now, if you're connecting through a phone, you'll see this as well. If you're connecting through OS X or Linux, you'll, st you'll still see this. And you can see here at the top at the bar, it's telling me that I need to log in to access the internet. So if I try to go to anything, if I try to go to Bing, for example, you'll see I'll still be redirected to the hotspot login. As you can see, the login is done through a website, through a web interface. And even on phones and on Mac OS X, you'll see a pop-up window shows up. But this pop-up window is just a web browser without a navigation bar. So the, the data is being sent through a web interface through HTTP or HTTPS. So looking at that, because the network is open, we can think of so many ways to steal the password or gain access to this network and bypass the login. Now, a very simple method would be to try and change your MAC address to one of a connected client. So all you have to do in this case is just open aerodump ng, look for connected clients in the second section of the program, and then change your MAC address to the MAC address of a connected client using MAC changer. Now this process is identical to the process that you'd follow to bypass whitelist filtering and I covered that in a previous lecture. Therefore, I'm not going to cover the first method in here because it's literally going to be exactly the same method as the one I covered in the whitelist filtering. What I'm going to show you though, I'm going to show you the three other methods that I think are very, very useful. The first method is going to be sniffing logins in monitor mode. Now, because by definition, captive portals have to be open networks, because like I said, they're usually used in offices in hotels and so on. They're usually open. And then once you log in, they ask you for a username and a password. So this means that we don't even need to connect and we'll be able to capture the data and read it in plain text unless the data is being sent over HTTPS. So we can just start monitor mode sniff the data using aerodump ng, save it in a file, and then read the file and look for a username and a password in Wireshark once someone logs in. Now you can force someone to log in by running a de-authentication attack and wait for them to get disconnected. Then when they connect again, they usually get asked to enter the password again. So let's see how to do that. I'm going to go to Kali. And first of all, I already have my wireless adapter connected. So if I do if config, you can see my wireless adapter. Now I'm going to enable monitor mode on it real quick. We've covered this. We've covered how to do that in a number of ways. So that's why I'm just going to do it really quickly. So I'm going to do if config LAN zero down. Then I'm going to do IW config LAN zero mode monitor. And then I'm going to do if config LAN zero up to bring the card up. Sorry, I forgot to put up. And now it's in monitor mode. So if we do IW config, we can see that the card is in monitor mode. So that's perfect. Now the next step, I'm going to just run aerodump ng against all the networks around me. So I'm just going to do aerodump ng LAN zero. 
Okay, now we have our target. We can see it right here. It's called airport hotspot. We can see that it's an open network. It's on channel 12 and we can see its MAC address. So as usual, we want to run aerodompng against this specific network. Again, we've done this a lot before, so I'm going to do it a bit quickly. I'm going to copy the MAC address. And I'm going to run aerodompng. I'm going to give it the BSS ID and the channel which is 12 and then I'm going to write everything to a file and let's call that file airport because the network is called airport hotspot and finally we'll give the name of our wireless card in monitor mode which is LAN0 so a very simple command that we've run multiple times the first thing we do is we do arrow dump ng we're given the BSS ID, which is the MAC address of the target network. We're given the channel that the target network is working on, and we can see it's working on channel 12. We're saying write because we want to store all the captured data in a file, and we're calling that file airport. And finally, we have to give the name of the wireless interface in monitor mode, and in my case, it's LAN0. I'm going to hit enter. And as you can see now, Aerodump NG is working and we can see that we have a connected client already. Now, like I said, if the client is connected and is using the internet, you can just do a deauthentication attack and get it disconnected for a while. I'm not going to do that because I don't want to make the lecture too long. We've already covered that. So we're just going to assume that we did deauthenticate our target and now our target is going to go ahead and try to connect again. So I have my Windows machine here. I'm going to close this. And I'm actually going to disconnect from the network. And then I'm going to connect to it again. Now, as you can see, we automatically get the login page again. We're assuming that the user, this specific user already have a password, whether they are, um, they're staying in this hotel or this airport or whether they actually bought a membership to access the internet, to access this Wi-Fi network. We don't care. Now the user is going to enter their password and we're going to assume that it's one, two, three, four, five, six. This is actually a valid password. We're going to log in and will be redirected to Google. So this user got their internet access and they're happy they can go and do whatever they want. Now let's go to the Kali machine and see if we capture the password. I'm going to control C out of this. And then I'm going to run Wireshark so we can just do Wireshark in here. I'm going to go to file, open and open the file that we just captured. So we call the file airport and we're looking for the cap extension. So as you can see, we have a file here called airport01.cap. I'm going to open it. Like I said before, Aerodop ng automatically appends minus zero one to the name that you pick when you create the file. And right here we have all the packets that we captured that were sent to the target network, to the airport network. Now, what we're interested in is the HTTP traffic because as we see in the username and password are being sent over HTTP. So in the filter here, I'm just going to type in HTTP. Hit enter. And Wireshark right here is only showing me HTTP packets. Now, login forms and such forms are usually sent over post. So we want to look for a post request here instead of get. So I'm going to scroll down until I find a post request. So you can see we have one here. I'm going to go down and look for the HTML form URL encoded. And we can see that in here we actually don't have anything interesting. So I'm just going to keep going looking for more post requests. I have another one here. And this one looks interesting because we can see that there is an operation called login in here. We can see that the username is set to nothing and we can see the password is set to one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's it. We have the password. Now we can just go to the network manager here in Cali, connect to the network, 
put the password the same way that the user put it, one, two, three, four, five, six, and we'll be able to connect the network and we'll have a proper legitimate access instead of changing the MAC address where you might get caught because there'll be two MAC addresses connected to the same network.